Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Grace. Today's video was actually really highly requested, actually. It's one of my first videos that has actually been like highly requested by you guys. I've had a few comments asking for tips to learn um, Cantonese, tips for learning Cantonese, because I've made quite a few videos in Cantonese. I'll link them down below. And so you guys want some tips. And yeah, today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my tips for learning Cantonese. So the first tip is to do with pronunciation because Cantonese pronunciation is one of the, if not the hardest factor about learning Cantonese. Cantonese has six tones, six tones, and also not just the tones, but also some of the vowel consonant sounds. If you're a native English speaker, they don't really exist in English. And so there's a lot to get used to. There's a lot to learn. And yeah, it can be really hard to learn it. I know a lot of you guys are, or not a lot of you, okay, some of you guys are like ABCs or BBCs, meaning that you were born in like an English speaking country, but your parents um, are from Hong Kong or China and they speak Cantonese. And therefore you're kind of familiar with the pronunciation, but not really. I think if you actually want to like properly, you know, better your pronunciation, even if your parents can speak Cantonese, I think it will help, it's worth, actually learning the pronunciation as if you you don't have any prior experience with Cantonese, you know. I know Cantonese Class 101.com, um, well, the YouTube channel, um, they have a pronunciation guide on the YouTube channel. I'll, I'll link it down below where they like, they go through every vowel sound and they say it and then you say it after. So like you're going, ah, e, U, like it's really like long and kind of just like but it's really it's i think it's necessary you know and then going through the consonant sounds as well like t, like for example the number tat that kind of t kind of sound right and then and then of course going through the tones as well so going through first tone second tone you know each of the tones and i think it's worth just sitting down like spending an hour or more like just slowly going through everything because after you do that it will just be a matter of you know like practicing and getting it perfect i also actually have a youtube video that i've made on how to master chinese tones so i'll link that down below um so that can help you guys with getting those tones right next i want to say if you don't use the dictionaries pleco and CC Canto online, then what are you doing? Pleco is really, really, really useful. It's actually, when you first, it's an app. So when you first download the app, you're just gonna see English to Mandarin and Mandarin to English. But if you go in settings, you can turn on Cantonese and then you can have Cantonese as well. It's really good because it has idioms and it has like spoken colloquial phrases. Do you know what I mean? So that's really, really helpful. Like the amount of times where I watch a TV drama and they'll say some colloquial phrase and I'll, Look it up in Pleco and I'll be thinking, actually, Pleco probably won't even have it. And it's actually there, like, re and it has swear words, it has, like, everything. It's really good. Then CC Canto is a dictionary online. Um, It's not an app, so if you're on your computer, you know, your laptop, you can have CC Canto open. That's also really good. And also, Pleco has sound as well, so that's really great. It's really important to learn with sound and repeat after the sound so you can get that pronunciation. So the third tip I'd say is that it's really important that you have someone that you can practice with. I mean, this is for, it goes for any language. Like I said, you guys who are ABC, BBC, you know, you guys who have Cantonese family or even Cantonese, Cantonese speaking friends or a girlfriend or boyfriend who speaks Cantonese, you know, practice with them. Like, so why are you still speaking English with them? Like, if you're really serious about, you know, better in Cantonese, then you really need to practice and speak as much as you can and if you have people who you could who you speak with regularly who speak Cantonese you really need to utilize that and speak as much Cantonese as you can you know I know it's kind it can be kind of embarrassing you know you're a bit shy but you know what the words are gonna get you that's literally gonna get you nowhere so you just have to suck it up and just speak if you don't know anyone like me then you can try find some people online I think italki, you, I think they've removed their language partner feature. They used to have a feature where you can just find people that you can practice with. Now the website is more geared towards people who want to get lessons. If you, you if you have money to spend, you can actually invest 
in like a teacher who you can practice with um how much it costs just depends on the on, on the person on the teacher i know some people do it quite cheap like four or five pounds and then some people it's like 20 pounds so also, but also you have to think about okay but well, how's the quality of the lesson but if you're just trying to get some conversational practice then maybe you know spending four pounds for an hour is not bad you know what i mean but i don't know if you don't want to find someone if you don't want to pay on italki um you can try tandem that's an app where you can find people um also also i'm sure if you go online there's some sort of pen pal language exchange kind of websites where you can find people but it's really important to have someone that you can practice with so they can correct your pronunciation you know you can learn new words from conversation also i forgot the app hello talk how can i forget about hello talk hello talk is also really good for finding people uh, i remember there was a period of time where i found this girl on hello talk and we literally spoke like every day even it was only like 10 15 minutes like on the way to school i would just speak to her every day because when i was going to school it was like mid-afternoon in china so we would just speak and i saw so much progress within like a month because every day i was consistently speaking Cantonese. i was learning so much from her so that's really great so the fourth tip i have is to watch a lot like input is really important if you're a beginner i would actually recommend for you to watch cartoons in cantonese I watched Peppa Pig in Cantonese and you might be thinking Peppa Pig like why am I gonna watch Peppa Pig but it's really good because the words they use is is so simple because Peppa Pig especially is aimed for really small kids like some cartoons are usually aimed for like nine ten year olds right I and mean, I think a ten year old has a pretty decent vocabulary but Peppa Pig is aimed for like four you know five-year-olds like really small children who really don't have a wide vocabulary so the words used are really really simple and they speak really slowly honestly it's so good i remember when i first started watching Peppa pig i didn't really i understood about like 40 percent and then you know it got to a point where i was understanding everything and it's just great to see that progress like even though Peppa pig is really basic just sh seeing that i'm learning a lot from it is really encouraging so on youtube they have episodes with english sub you can start with those and they also have episodes without english sub so you know then you can move on to those and yeah like it's really good for just learning building that strong basic vocabulary i know the anime doraemon is also like really popular um that has been dubbed in cantonese like many episodes and there are also many other like anime and cartoons on youtube that are dubbed in cantonese so i really recommend them because even though they're cartoons, you can really learn a lot from them because they won't speak too quickly and they won't use complicated vocabulary. But of course, if you're an intermediate, more advanced learner, or even as a beginner, it's also really helpful to watch TV, like TV dramas, movies, like actual everyday, to actually hear how normal Cantonese speakers would speak. And also, you know, YouTubers. Um, I can share some of the YouTubers that I watch, but obviously, I don't know what kind of videos you like to watch on YouTube, but I watch like Mira's Garden. She does like vlogs. She's living in Korea, um, but she's from Hong Kong. So she does like vlogs about living in Korea and Cantonese. Um, Pumpkin Jen, she does like beauty, kind of like fashion vlogs kind of videos. There's this channel Cantonese with Brittany. She does like videos aimed at Cantonese learners. So her videos have English subtitles as well as subtitles in Yip Ping as well as subtitles in Chinese, like Chinese characters. So they're really useful. I'll link all of those channels down below so you can have a look. But you can really, really, really learn a lot from input. Like I really learned a lot. I, I learn, I don't like, I'm not gonna say learned. I learn a lot from input on watching stuff. So many words, colloquial ways of speaking. I made a video talking about like really how influential watching stuff in the language can be. And also I've also made a video on how to learn a language with TV. So how to really maximize how much you're learning by from watching. So I'll link both of those videos down below so you can watch those and you can really start kickstart your learning with watching stuff in the language. Unfortunately, I can't really give too many tips for reading and writing because I'm not really learning how to read and write. Um, I am actually I'm learning how to read and write simplified characters but that's from Mandarin I'm, I'm not learning how to write traditional characters so I can't really help too much with that but I'm sure there are like books you know online you can try to find some books that will teach you traditional characters in Cantonese and um, like, like the Cantonese pronunciations and not just the Mandarin ones and then if you want to buy a textbook for Cantonese if you're a very if you're a beginner you can I know there's Dai Ga Ge Guang Dong Wa um, Cantonese for everyone that's really good I know teach yourself 
also has a Cantonese like book so teach yourself complete Cantonese that's for beginners as well and then there's this Cantonese vocab book that has come up in my videos many 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 times which is just for vocabularies so I actually put the link of where you can get this book in the description below so the, the description is going to be packed with stuff so make sure you open it and check in there and just get what you can so yeah that is it guys that is a video on tips for learning Cantonese I've actually already made a video on how I how to learn Cantonese so I'll link that down below and yeah I really hope this video was useful I really hope it was helpful um you know some people say that Cantonese is a, is a dying language it's kind of sad so like I'm really trying to encourage people to learn if you want to learn learn definitely and don't give up keep going let's keep going let's reach fluency and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. If you really like this video, please give it a like. Comment down below your thoughts, any other tips that you might have. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Also, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends as well. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next one, okay? So, bye.